Well, ladies and gentlemen, here in Seattle and watching around the country on NBCSN, it is time to bring out one of the most desirable and valuable muscle cars on the planet. A 1971 Hemi Cuda four-speed convertible, one of only 11 built, only two were sold here in the U.S. This is the documented only numbers matching 71 Hemi Cuda four-speed convertible known to exist. Mark Delzell, let's sell this car. This is one of the top dogs of the auction, and actually, Scott, in the performance car world, one of the top sellers for calendar year 2014. This is big news. The big question is, how much will the Mopar Hemi market recover from the adjustment that we all were well aware of back in 2008? We are, it's all coming to a head right now in the next couple minutes. And it's already going to make some history. It's already at $2 million, guys. Wow. I'm, I'm just out of breath and got goosebumps as this event is happening right before our very eyes. Let's talk about what might draw the draw this much interest to this car. First of all, the Hemi from the 1960s really represents everything that was going on with the outrageousness of the horsepower race between all the manufacturers. And it really is considered to be 1971 for the Mopar gang, the absolute end of the line for that. And the rarity, the performance, the presentation of this car, and the fact that it's still sporting its original power plant, Bill. And if you go back to 1971, you ask the question, why did Chrysler only go for 11? Hemi convert? Well, convertibles, by and large, were heavier than the fixed roof cars. And if you really wanted a Hemi Cuda, you were going to go out and probably, you know, uh, engage in some uh, street racing. Uh, Woodward Avenue comes to mind, or even take it to the drag strip. And the real high performance aficionados, they didn't want the extra weight of the convertible. So that is another reason why so few of them were built. Love the plain steel wheels with the hubcaps. We got a nice look inside the cockpit. No console between the bucket seats, but that pistol grip shift commanding presence of its own. No console needed on this one. $2.8 million. Guys, let's not underestimate the impact of the provenance of this car. It is extremely well documented all the way back to the original owner. There's very, very few gaps in the provenance of documentation. What year was it, John? 2002 that the first, the documented first muscle car sold for over a million dollars 10, 12 years ago? Something like that? Right. 2.95 now. Okay, because I might get him up to 3.2 or something. I don't want to, I don't want to lose it for... You know, if the last 12 or 13 years have taught us anything, there was Hemi hysteria back, yes. you know, in that time when anything with a Hemi was way overvalued, and now it's a much more discriminating market, and these are the cars that the money people want to own. Got three, Kevin. And even three million. The other guy million. might come back if I take the reserve off, but I got three. Yeah, but when I go to replace it, I'm going to have to pay for it for the next one. Ah, that'll be four or five years, though. Yeah, well, if I don't sell it, then I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> Got three. You want to sell it? Got three million fifty. Three one. I wonder what the number is that that gentleman has in his mind that'll take to pull the trigger. Two bidders on the phone back there in the back with Wade and Frank Meekin in the far background. It's the battle in Seattle. Yeah. Three, three. Three, three. Three, three. Three, three. 
Zerdan at 3-5 is the magic number. Yeah. He's, just, he's in at 3-3, but he's a high bidder, but he won't sell it. What's another couple of hundred grand when you're already at 3.3 million? 3-3-50! Well, <laughs> they're working their way up. <laughs> you know, this is the kind of thing that Dana Meekum lives for, isn't it, JK? Dana and Frank Meekum yeah, both. Yeah, right, right. A piece of paper. We just may see a world record here, Scott. Dana's out with a notebook. And crunching those numbers. You know, even though this car has been restored, I still consider it a survivor. Original drivetrain. Just think of how many different things could have been done to this car yes. over the years. It yes. would not make it as original as it is. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, yeah, absolutely. We, we said earlier the, the only documented one with the original engine still yeah. in existence. I, I don't know if there's any more there, Kevin. We take the reserve off the other guy, Mike Bed. Got an engine 3 3. Oh. It's 80 grand from where you needed to be. Huh? No. Hard to judge that buyer. Serves off at three five. Still not there. Frank's back in the background talking to his guy on the phone. You don't get another shot, Ross. I know. Give me three five. You know, Frank makes a really good point, JK. Reserve will be off. That's the only thing that's going to work. When's the next time you're going to see this car on the auction block? I mean, you've got an opportunity to buy it right here and right now, and you might not get that opportunity for a while. Three five. What do you think? What do you think, guys? I don't know. I know. Three five. There it is. <laughs> What's that we're gonna do, guys? Now, right now, the ball's in. Now it's crunch time. Here we go. Wow. Six. Wow. <laughs> History in the making. Oh my goodness, what a moment. It'll be a day nobody is going to forget. Seattle 2014 Meekum's debut, world record muscle car. Seattle, we love ya! Third and final call. Sold! $3.5 million. 1971 Plymouth Hemi Cuda. And hey, guess what? We've got an L88 still to come. out in the bullpen. You know what? There's a saying up. that whoever cares least wins. And the guy stuck by his guns and said, this is what we're going to get. Wow. And Dana went to work and made it happen. That right. was amazing to see. Man, $3.5 million. Guys, I think that might be our number one car of the auction so far. <laughs>